Hi, everybody. Welcome to Maker Monday. I am Chris Bakke, um, Customer Engagement Manager with NASCO Education. And I am your biggest fan in terms of an art teacher's biggest fan. But it just was reinforced this weekend as I um, got help cutting cardboard out and got enlisted my um, three and a half year old granddaughter to help me paint all my cardboard decorations in the back. And it was one of those moments where, you know, you just love you guys even more for all the work that you put into it. Today, I'm really excited. I always talk about the silver linings in 2020 and the um, fact that they are there. And um, Lakota Mossi, Mossi is one of them. She is an art educator in Arizona that um, watched a Maker Monday and reached out. And in talking with her and having a Google um, Hangout meet, it was just perfect. And I was so excited. And I asked her to please share some of the amazing things she's doing. She is currently um, in Arizona. Um, she's doing all of her teaching um, via distance learning, virtual. And so I, she's going to talk today about cardboard art, but she's also going to share some of the great things that are working for her for distance learning. So welcome, Lakota, and thank you so much for being here. Um, you and I had a little bit of technical difficulties with handouts, so yeah. I've already put in um, one of the comments, um, Lakota's Instagram and her Facebook, and she'll be posting on those later and we will and sharing with me and so one way or another we'll get you some handouts so be patient with us and i apologize but lakota it's going to be worth it so i'm excited to have you here today thank you thank you so much chris i'm excited to be here as well again my name is lakota mossy and i'm so excited to share some of my art lessons and ideas that have worked with distance learning so this is going into my third week of distance learning and i teach um, kindergarten through sixth grade and um, so I try to keep it a little bit fun and silly for the kids and some of my things now that we have all these different things we're trying to teach them with the mute button the unmute all of these things I've been using some props kind of like Carrot Top or Gallagher or a prop comic P shades of Pee Wee Herman and uh, it's gotten a great response from my students so I'll share some of those with you guys so when I'm trying to hear my students and they have the mute button on, I'll use this giant ear and say, what, can't hear you. And that usually gets a pretty big chuckle out of them. And then if I'm trying to get them to be quiet, I have this little guy, Mr. Moot, and he has been really helping getting the kids quiet. Yeah, yeah, he helps a lot. So the kids think it's really silly and fun and getting kind of close with a camera and uh, make it goofy. So that's how. And when I'm telling the kids to get their art supplies out, I say, oh, grab a crayon, grab a crayon or grab a pencil. And again, just kind of something to make it more engaging, more silly and more fun for the kids. So I've also been doing Fridays, Friday fun day or hat day or silly glasses day. And again, a huge hit with these guys. When I say silly glasses day, try to get them dancing a little, you know, stretching. So they're not used to sitting so long in front of a computer. None of us are. So wanna try to make it engaging and fun. All right, all my props. So next I wanna share some of the artists that I've have inspired me with cardboard art and uh, that I've modeled some of my lesson plans after. First artist is Claire Young, and she is an artist in the UK. Um, she does a lot of cardboard art, little animals, and she will do jelly printmaking. And if you haven't done that before, you have to do it. It is printmaking, but without a press. And so you use the jelly and paint on it, and you can get some really exquisite results uh, just from doing that. So. Here's some of my jelly paper inspired by Claire Young. So she does, and you can use all kinds of paper to make these little um, animals here. 
So I do it on top of cardboard. So I'll do get either craft paper or do the jelly print. And then I'll put it, glue it on top of cardboard, just like this. And then I cut out the cardboard pieces, the lion head, lion body, lion feet and lion tail. And then I assemble it from there. And the kids can definitely do that at home if they don't have, once you start working with cardboard, you'll see there's all different types of cardboard. So one that most of them have is the nice thin cereal boxes. So that works really well. And then they can utilize both sides. You could even have them do a grid drawing from something here or character drawing, or they could even do some sort of collage on top of this as well. So that works out. Another one is, um, again, just from cereal boxes. This one's painted and then assembled. And they could do shadow puppetry with this. Um, the possibilities are endless. They could put on a little puppet show um, during distance learning and everyone could have a little part or you could have them do poetry or some sort of story related to that. Um, and speaking of that, I often like to do something that is attached to a story with literature. Um, recently we had read um, Why is the Blue Dog Blue by George Rodriguez, who is an amazing New Orleans artist and I'm sure you've seen his blue dog work. The kids love it. Um, this one I did, I was inspired from Instagram. Oops. <laughs> and this is just a little egg carton that I painted and then glued on top and then just did the background with, um, like did a little frame. So again, just more cardboard doing the little frame here and they could do with any story. You could have this relate to um, wonder or, um, the, the possibilities are endless, obviously, right? But just painting this and then putting that inside. So I showed you, the, oh, and then here's another little alligator inspired by Claire Young. Again, and I just kind of poked holes in it here with a little hole puncher to give it a little bit of interest and to kind of show some texture. Of course, you can teach them line with this, shape, all kinds of different elements of art to engage them. All right, our other artist is Norville Morisot, and he is a Canadian, a Canada native, America, Canada native, I'm sorry, um, and his art is absolutely exquisite. Um, I recommend Googling him and looking at some of his videos, and you could share that with your students through distance learning. And then they could get a little idea of um, his concept and his history. So I'll share some of that. Um, so I will often paint it. And of course, they didn't ha wouldn't have to do it this detailed. But this is a big totem pole I'm planning. So um, you could also talk about all of the Native stories that relate to that uh, with folklore and um, could be a really interesting lesson and also this could be a mask and this one a mask as well so i was thinking it would be wonderful if when the students are back in or um, they could bring their mask back with them and you could put them on cardboard boxes stacking to create a totem pole of the class so something a little bit like this one that i did this thunderbird and this is just a box and then I put this here and glued this on with um, just uh, with a hot glue gun. And these could all get stacked on top. And then you could just drill here at the bottom to attach them all together to have that totem. Another Norville Morisot, I'm starting this suit. I wanted to show what it looks like before it's painted. And this could also, you could just use regular cardboard, and I think it would be just as beautiful instead of painting it. Obviously, you want the students to have supplies that are easy um, to grab at home that they have sitting around. So just even layering this, you could do the feathers repeated over this, talk about pattern. Um, again, a lot of Native work by uh, Moroso um, shows repetition, um, symmetry, 
everything the same on both sides. So you can tie all of that into the lesson as well. Some other fun packing supplies. This, this fun stuff. <laughs> Instead of, uh, they would have those little foam, now they have this. And I thought, oh my goodness, this is a great start to anything. This could be a lion. This could be, um, again, just tie it in with a Norval lesson and make it really cool. Do a couple eyes here like this. I just love this stuff. It's just, <laughs> I think the kids would really enjoy it too. It's really fun. Right. The next big thing I want to touch on is, of course, right now with our kids, social emotional. It's so important that they feel comfortable and that they can express themselves through art. So instead of sometimes we fall back and we make these kind of cute things, sometimes it's fun for them to make things that express the way they're feeling. Maybe they're frustrated right now, right? This is their first time at home learning distance learning and with everything going on, it can be a scary time for those little ones. So expressing themselves, um, then it's not always rainbows and unicorns. So maybe something crazy like this to show how they're feeling. You know, this is a very expressive, shows kind of anger, um, fear, anxiety. And these are all things so many of us are feeling right now. So to be able to just express that and get that out and work through their emotions through art, art therapy, incredibly important right now. Um, so I thought something like this would be really a great point. And of course, always on the back here too, the kids can, you know, maybe you want to have them write a haiku or a poem or like a six word story to describe how they're feeling. And then they're working through those emotions. And on a little happier, fun one, if they maybe they're feeling really excited and happy. So did this little half base again, very thin cardboard. It's very easy to work with. And um, they could just do half of their face. Okay. So I'm here in Phoenix, Arizona. <clears throat> and recently at the Museum of Musical Instruments, the MIM, they have a beautiful mask exhibit on African masks from the Congo. And um, back in, I think, February, I went and it was so cool. So. <clears throat> I've done some math inspired by that. So of course you will always have the students sketch out their masks before they create them. And this is just the book that I got when I was there. So Congo, Mass and Music. So uh, Masterpieces from Central Africa. Really a neat exhibit. And I took my students there on a tour last week, a little virtual tour. So that's available if you were interested. So some of those masks that I saw, I just kind of created some fun things. Then um, there was this one that I did, just all of these different shapes and using different colored cardboard. Um, you don't have to paint, cardboard comes in all different colors and they can use that to their advantage. Um, this one is fun, kind of with a collar and again, showing that kind of asymmetrical, repeated patterns and shapes. I mean, this is just a pizza box from <laughs> So some of the kids love animals. Of course, you could have them do some sort of animals if they wanted. Um, and again, back to that social emotional kind of showing fear um, through expression. <clears throat> Another artist I really want to share with you, if you're not familiar with, is Kimmy Cantrell. And last week, my students went into his studio, um, virtually, of course, and it was so wonderful to hear him talk about his process and talk about art and what inspires him. He also talks a lot about colors and the association with that. He talks that in 94% of his artwork, he uses red, red for passion, red for love, and that's just something he's really drawn to and connected to. He also is, of course, a contemporary artist who's still with us today and has made a living for the last, I think it's 19 years as an artist. He quit his work and then 
um, followed his dream. So that's kind of one of those great stories to show a successful artist that is making it, um, doing what they love. So here is some of his, um, some things inspired. So I always have the kids do a sketch first and we looked inside his studio, saw his process. He does, his medium is clay. And so he showed how to, how to make it to the kids um, and the process. And of course I was telling my students, I hope when they come back, we can make them out of clay. But for now, we're just gonna either do sketches or with cardboard. So just a little quick sketch. And again, if they don't have the cardboard or they don't have something, you always want to have a backup right now, I've learned. Um, I do always ask that they make it with marker or Sharpie because it's very hard to see their drawings if they're with pencil, I've found. So just another little tip. So uh, before school started, we did have a pickup to drive through and get supplies. So I cut uh, 500 of these and had them ready for pickup. You wouldn't have to do that. I just happened to have had a lot and had some time. So I did kind of make it so that students would know that um, this is the would be a, the jawline. Of course, they, if they didn't like it, they could cut it off and do something new just to kind of help them out and have them have a start. I also passed out these really super cool sticky foam. And you can get these um, on the NASCO website. These are amazing because they're very easy to cut out shapes and they already have the sticker on them. So we made them together online and um, made the hair and just had cut everything out for all the repeated shapes. And uh, of course we talked about symmetry. We talked about this being asymmetrical versus symmetrical and uh, talked about the colors and you can always refer to the color families. You could have it all cool or all warm colors, analogous colors, complementary, you know, list goes on, right? So you can um, have it do it a variety of different ways. And I did also um, show something like this so the kids could see more of the different types of faces. Um, I also showed this one without, if they didn't have access to the foam, um, it still looks pretty cool. And we talked about how it was 2D, two dimensional. And then if something would have been protruding out, then we would be moving to 3D. So um, another great element of art or something you can refer back to. And the Kimmy control really, uh, really is fun. And um, it's something I kept getting tagged on over and over on Facebook. So I knew that parents really kind of resonated with that and liked it. And a lot of the times that's where I'll start lessons is if, um, you know, it's, it's something that everybody's interested in and it's very fun. Uh, that kind of will drive me to where I plan for my lessons. I forgot to show this. When you are doing, um, when I was doing the African mask, the Congo mask, I also had them uh, do a little paper cutout if they didn't have um, cardboard. And so I did show all the different um, options that they could have for this, just a little cutouts like this to color them in. Um, and I did this as an attachment so the parents could download that before uh, we got started. So they really, uh, help to have this as an option as well. Again, the more options we have right now, um, the better. A lot of my students, when they come to uh, the distance learning class, they often don't have anything with them. So um, I said at least a piece of paper, a lined paper, whatever's lined by. So um, again, kind of I can't reiterate enough with that backup plan. So a um, few more that I am excited to show. Um, be sure to be saving these small cardboard pieces to create looms. If you're into fiber, kids really enjoy these. Um, and it's just simply a piece of cardboard here and it's got the little slits up here top. I just use an X-Acto knife to make those to kind of make what I call the bones of their fiber art project. And then just wrap a color around. And here you can see in the back, I just tape it here, kind of making it um, easy to undo after they've created their um, little looms. 
So this is another great one. I'm trying to make enough of these um, to have as another pickup for my students, for my probably my fifth and sixth graders um, to have yarn, and then I'll have a little plastic needle and then this um, for pickup. And I've also seen, uh, I created it, I'm not sure where it went, but I made, saw it online and it was a little llama, just a cut out little llama. And that's on my Instagram, but um, I'll see if I can find my pattern and have that as an attachment as well, if anyone's interested. But as a little llama, instead of it just being a square, you could make any kind of animal. You could even do um, blue dog, I just thought of that. And then you could just like, they could weave the sweater kind of around the dog instead of it being just something plain. All these ideas, but the llama was cute because, um, or alpaca, whichever, and around his little tummy, was um, the loom. And so when you were done, it made like a little, you know, saddle blanket on your alpaca. Okay. So a lot of these, they do work for any grade level. I would say you can take it, you can make it as advanced as you would like to, or as, um, you know, easier for little the little ones, the wee ones. So um, I thought, I've been seeing rainbows are just everywhere, aren't they? I mean, I love them, but they seem to be more popular than ever. So I thought, well, just do cardboard cut out as a rainbow. And then again, the possibilities are endless. You could even make this into a loom, right? All you would have to do is do the little um, lines here, put in the string, and then you could loom onto this. Another idea, you could turn this into a collage. And then they could put all kinds of, you know, little whatever, sequins, glitter, um, cut out pieces of paper, leftover scraps, anything that they found to create a collage. They could even use magazines at home to do that. Um, but also punch holes here in the bottom of this and have things kind of like that Dreamweaver um, example. And then they could punch two holes here and do string. So it could be something fun that they could hang in their rooms or give as, send as presents, something like that. So even just a little rainbow like this, you can go on and on and make so many cool things from it. Um, another little idea. Something else I recently made out of cardboard that I thought was fun. We were, again, uh, attaching stories to it. We read Pete the Cat, and kids love Pete the Cat. So we all made our own guitars. Just. It is kind of hard to keep this from getting all bendy, but um, it was a fun one. And they could make all kinds of, they could even do, you know, do string through here and make it so that they would have string, um, make it as advanced as you want. They could even do a really beautiful painting onto here. Um, maybe you could show them how to do uh, a lesson on perspective and then they could like decorate their own guitars. So this would work if you taught music too, and you're trying to figure out some virtual lessons um, from what they have at home, you could connect that. Another big one I did is, is I did this guitar. This one I did out of thicker cardboard, so um, it's a little more sturdy. I found that I liked that. And I had this, um, I just cut it out, and now I have that, and I painted on top of this, kind of blended everything together to, um, I'm gonna start kind of a sunset uh, painting on this and teach a lesson uh, on perspective. Um, here, I'm gonna kind of have the highway that comes out here and then the desert scene in the back. Well, I hope I'm not going too fast. I realize that I talk a little fast, so I apologize if I'm going too quickly for anyone. You're doing just any great. Okay. Great. All right. Um, a couple more things that I've discovered uh, that has been really, really helping with uh, keeping the kids engaged is having, um, I read all these things that how we're supposed to not react to this in their, um, in their background or talk about anything we see because maybe students don't feel comfortable about talking about their surroundings. So instead of saying right now, Oh, how was your summer? I've been saying uh, what, it, I'll make up something crazy. If you could travel anywhere in the world or something like that to kind of get them away from 
talking about the scariness that's been going on with summer and um, kind of thinking more abstractly with questions to get them engaged and excited. Um, also, when I did the virtual museum visit, um, that they absolutely love that. And we're going to be going to the Louvre next week. You can do that virtually. So we're going to kind of make it fun like we're traveling to Paris and I have this big Eiffel Tower that I'm going to bring and a little beret for some of my fun props and uh, trying to make it more of an adventure, uh, a virtual adventure. I also saw a post and I reposted it that the first, our first distance learning virtual guru was Mr. Rogers. So I've been watching some of his old episodes and the way he talks to the kids and gets them thinking in a way that expresses their emotions um, in just such a sweet, gentle, uh, nurturing way, I think is something fun to model your um, distance learning guru after your mantra. I think it's important to uh, make them feel this is just the most amazing time to develop those connections, basically. Because if you're an art teacher, you know that we have such limited time and we've got a class lined up waiting to get in. We have five minutes to clean up. And a lot of times I just feel so rushed. I just feel like just overly drained and, um, you know, bamboozled. So having this and getting to just see their little faces and just talk to them. And I said, um, this is my third week of distance learning. I had them in the chat. What was your favorite thing about art? And most of the time it said just getting to talk to you. Getting, it wasn't making the art and we did two projects each week, but it was just having that connection and feeling listened to, um, feeling of course validated and important. That's what we all want. So now is the perfect time to get those connections. And especially it's so cool because you see your kids and I have 500 students, I remember them all, but it can be a challenge. And it's so great that they have their little face and then their names right there. And so it makes it really easy to just constantly be calling out their names. Um, it's a great time to review that. Um, I just, I've actually found that distance learning, I'm looking at trying to look on the positive side and seeing all the good in it, seeing that we can make it fun, we can have connections. Um, it can definitely be something that we can use to our advantage, especially right now to advocate for the arts. We can showcase to people all of the things that we are doing. So I think- I love the advocating for the arts a lot. Um, and a couple questions, a couple questions as in like I got a whole page full. So if anybody um, watching has any questions, feel free to type them in the questions, um, the question box or the chat box, and we'll definitely work hard to get them answered. The props, I just want to say like props for the props because the ear is hilarious. Like that is so great. I feel like the catchphrase of 2020 is you're on mute. It, there's not a week or a day that doesn't go by where I swear to you, you hear it in some sort of virtual setting. So that is so great. And I think you're right in terms of getting, um, especially elementary kids engaged. I also um, wanted to just bring up to the cereal box idea. I love that. Um, I think pretty much everybody's eating cereal boxes, but I also like the part where you can, where you don't have to actually use paint. And I know that sounds crazy coming from the person who sells paint for a living, but you know, obviously there's a time and a place for your resources and materials. Um, and there's also that circumstance when children don't have the resources. So I love those kinds of tips. And just a couple other ideas is certainly um, asking at the grocery store or you know, um, organizations like your church or even school to ask the, um, the maintenance people, um, hey, if there's cardboard left from like the lunches that are handed out or anything like that, I think that's a fabulous idea. Show, the ho show your little horse one with the brad, the one that's with the brads on it again, because um, 
talk a little bit about how you painted it um, and what inspired like all the shapes and the texture and all that kind of stuff. Okay, yeah, absolutely. So um, my process was, I drew it out. Um, I did the head and body as one and just sketched it onto a piece of on the back of a cereal box. And then I actually painted um, before I cut it out. So I painted all the legs and tail and everything, before, let it dry. And then I put magazines on top so that it would dry flat um, to compress it after it had already dried, but to flatten it out. And then I cut out each of the pieces and then just use little brads. Um, and Chris was talking about, she has these this idea for, they're like plastic, kind of plastic brads or plastic screws, and that may work even better. But um, just attaching all these little guys here. And if you look at any of Claire Young's work, you'll see that she does a lot of patterns like this on her little, um, forest creatures or little animals and they're just they are so sweet and this definitely seems to be um, something that the kids love and I just started doing kind of I had the inspiration of some sort of circus horse in my or zebra in my mind so I that's um, where I kind of came up and you can see that it's painted but then I did go over things with a sharpie to make the black lines on here yeah. um, so it's pretty, did you use acrylic or did you use tempera I used acrylic on this one. Perfect. Yeah. Um, love it, and, love it, love it. And then um, the little, this little cutout is just regular cardstock. So you can do something like this on just regular cardstock too. Love that. Yeah. And so tell me a little bit about how you um, investigate artists. Because clearly these were some names and I did type them into um an earlier question so if you look at your questions i've got claire young kimmy Cantrell, um norval morso and george rodriguez into the um the comments but tell me a little bit about how you investigate different artists um usually it'll just be something that i i see somewhere you know it, of course instagram is a, a wonderful resource for that you'll just be kind of scrolling if you follow a lot of art teachers they have such amazing ideas you know it's the universal mind you think you've come up with something <laughs> and then you you go on pinterest or you go on facebook or instagram you're like oh someone already did that so that's just kind of how it is um, but George Rodriguez, I was in New Orleans and fell in love with his his artwork there with the blue dog, and um, it's been very fun. I've used this lesson year after year, and he was such an advocate for the arts and such a philanthropist. Yes, that organization is an absolute advocate for arts. Um, they have done a really nice job in his memory as well. Super funny story is um, there's the Louisiana Art Edu Education Association is smaller, but full of some super powerful, amazing art teachers. And I always have enjoyed um, participating in anything that I could. And so I was doing the Art Education Association conference for them. And while I was there, I went and visited a few of their the teachers' schools. And I'm from Wisconsin, you know, I know Bucky Badger, I didn't know Blue Dog. And so I um, I saw Blue Dog at the school and sort of thought maybe Blue Dog was the mascot of the school. And when I went into the room, they were all painting like some Blue Dog stuff. And I'm like, oh my gosh, your Blue Dogs are so cute. And then all of a sudden I see this whole bookshelf of Blue Dog books and I'm like, so, so Blue Dog's a thing? And this little kindergartner or first grader was like, you don't know Blue Dog? And I'm like, like she was super insulted. She's like, uh, that's our thing. And, and the teacher was like, well, slow down, Jane. Like, don't be mad at uh, Miss Chris. Um, tell her all about Blue Dog. So. Yeah, next thing you know, we were reading the story, Why is the Blue Dog Blue? Um, and it was fabulous. And yeah, needless to say, I was schooled by a bunch of kindergartners and first graders. 
Um, but then I cracked up because once you know, then you see it all over the place. Yeah. I had not really put top of mind awareness on it. Um, but yeah, so fun and so many fun things. Like I loved how you said, you know, weave the little sweater on them. Such a, so cute. And it's amazing what they do in New Orleans to Blue Dog, like all kinds of crazy fun stuff. Um, yeah. I also like how you talked about um, the social emotional part of it. I mean, I think that's so natural for an art room anyways, but also in the virtual setting. Um, as an art teacher, do you see a lot of students' feelings coming out in their art at an elementary age? You do, absolutely. A lot more than I thought I would as well, because I did teach high school and, and middle school previously. So I definitely see it with the little ones, kindergarten, first grade, second grade. Yeah, they really, um, I think it's that time for them to really express themselves. And I'll see them just getting in there with the oil pastels or the crayons. And I said, oh my goodness, you're really working hard. They're like, yeah, and mad, the playground, and, and they're just working through it. And it's so <laughs> cool to see. You know, I really encourage it. I'm like, yeah, do it. You know, get in there and encourage them to show their emotions through their art and, and work through things. So, absolutely. Yeah, we have recently partnered with, so NASCO is sort of um, like we look at the way that we um, present things as solutions for educators. And so our career um, cluster of solutions, which um, deals with the um, social and emotional learning curriculum and things like that, has partnered with um, the art education um, solutions. And art education has had like hundreds of lesson plans. They are available both on nascoeducation.com, which is our website, but we also now have a K to career platform. Um, it's a subscription based platform and it houses um, not only the lesson plans, but it also houses this, um, these PD and webinar recorded um, sessions. If you are watching or if you have registered, you will always get that follow up recording. So it is free to all, but then there is a spot where the whole library lives, which is fabulous. And um, the SEL team and the art team have partnered with some of those art education lesson plans, which made me really proud too, because so many um, art teachers have contributed to those. And so to see this lesson plan and to see the social and emotional learning that is written right in there just shows the importance of art education. And, and I feel like right now I'm a little bit aghast because at the beginning of this pandemic, um, when virtual learning happened and turned on a dime and it was without preparation, I really thought that would help our teachers in the fall have the benefit of being able to get our products into students' hands. And it's amazing how many still are struggling to fight that fight. And I, you know, shame on the world for not recognizing the need to just get some watercolors and some, you know, a Sharpie or a pen or pencil in some students' hands. And so that social emotional is there and I'm glad to partner because again, I'm glad to, you know, NASCO is glad to advocate for the arts because now more than ever, so, so important. The other part of that is you talked a little bit about your art supplies and that you put some kits together or some materials together. And then there was a pickup point. And I know Arizona has been um, very cautious as every state has, but sometimes numbers are higher in certain states. So how did you manage that um, safely? How did, how did you manage to hand out those materials safely? If you don't mind sharing that. Uh, no, not at all. So um, I packaged them myself in here in, in the art room. Um, and then I gave them to the teachers and set them outside their rooms. Um, I had everything pre-packaged. 
they are putting them in um, a pickup point and then we're letting it sit before we touch it again for 72 hours and then the parents will come pick it up. So it's just this time in between yep. uh, hands. And I, um, when I did deliver it, I did leave it in my room and then I had gloves on the whole time as well. So try to be very mindful about that, the m limited interaction with, with everybody the best that we can. And again, just making sure, and of course here it's so hot, <laughs> it's 115 <laughs> yesterday. So we're hoping that that also <laughs> helps to um, make it uh, safely. It gets yeah. hot too, but not that hot. <laughs> Yeah, not can. usually if it's 115 <laughs> we're talking about like record breaking kind of stuff so i feel i definitely feel for you there and thank you for sharing that there's been a lot of ideas in terms of you know um drive drive ups where mm -hmm. masks and gloves and somebody just puts it into a trunk or through a window so that it's very contactless um, there's been a couple where, um, if you can't, if you're not sure what that little round motion was, that was my bus going around a route, but where they've hired the bus drivers to still drive a route, but they stop and it becomes a point of pickup and the boxes just, they open the doors and the box of materials is there and each family just comes up and picks out one and then the bus moves on and that's another option or when they're doing um, some of the um, lunches that they're giving out, um, that also becomes a pickup point. And I just throw those ideas out there only because this is a time where there's, some people have already gone back to school, some people are still yet to go back to school. So just trying to share as many ideas of how things can work that way. And um, like you said, getting those supplies so that you don't have to re rely on cutting different pieces of colored cardboard just so you can get your color in there. I also wanted to throw out a little bit of um, STEM and STEAM because um, as you were talking about, um, you know, how do they make their parts moving? Um, how do they attach parts? Things like that, um, certainly in the building of the box, and you, you build on top of that, you know, you have to think about how you design it. That is definitely engineering. And um, I think that it's always important to show that cross curricular, which Lakota, I know that you do in lots of things as we talk. Um, and just, that is just a reminder too, because again, there are some circumstances where art is, not a necessity or not a requirement and so when you can partner with another teacher that adds to the science or the math or the literacy i like that a lot um, it gives those students that have that creative flair and every, all students are creative but it but it, it it helps them bring that out and the ones where that's how it helps them learn it, it's just such a great opportunity. Yeah. What else am I missing? Am I miss the question was asked? Is is the record is the session recorded? It is, and in an hour, about an hour, you receive an email that has um, a PD certificate if you watched it live. If you um, did not, if this um, the the registration goes or the email goes out to all who registered and um the recorded session goes out to those who missed so it's always worth um signing up um, when the email goes out or when you see it on social media we are taking a break um for the next two mondays we're letting those who are back to work um and lakota you were so phenomenal to do this in the middle of actually teaching so thank you for that but also for the ones that are getting ready to go to school, we'll just take a little bit of break. And then in September, we're gonna come back with um, Maker Monday, the after school edition. And it's hard to find a, a time frame that fits the East Coast to the, um, to the West Coast, because there's a big old time difference there. And so for the West Coast folks, it probably will still be 
during your school day. So sign up anyways, because you get the recorded session when you register. Um, I throw that out there because it does sort of change as teachers are going back to school. I'm thinking, let's see, I covered that. Oh, the virtual field trips. I love that. Um, how did you find um, the field trips and like, was it free? Did you, did, did you have to pay? Did parents have to pay? No, it's all free right now. So um, if you go onto your local museum or of course, um, like, like we're doing the Louvre, it, it's a virtual tour and it's all completely free. So it's so great to share your screen and then have your students get to see that. Um, it, I was also thinking, you know, when we're talking about this cross-curricular, you know, any, anything, a lesson that I did that was really fun, um, we were doing, talking about owls and we were drawing owls. Of course, then you can go onto so many different um, cross cross curriculum, but I did it with science. So I actually had someone come in with a live owl from the zoo. So the students um, got to wow. draw it, draw the owl live. Then um, we had some owl pellets and we dissected those owl pellets and then sketched them. Mask with a, sells a ton of those owl pellets. Yeah, their kids love it. It's it's so interesting. And and then they did the watercolor sketches of that. So um, and of course they do our field trip right now with some of the zoos too. They'll someone will walk you through and you can see the animals. So thinking of drawing that way and um, something that I thought of that I forgot to mention too that I wanted to when talking about the totem poles and to put that you could even do that with you know thinking of science and do a food chain so you could you know start sure. up with a and then keep and then do the whole food chain all the way up and they could make a totem that way so um they could do it with books some of their favorite books or a book with all the book characters you know you do any harry potter or whatever yes. uh, where imagination goes so um possibilities endless right <laughs> oh absolutely and i loved your reference to mr rogers um and clearly a favorite of mine which probably um, tells my age a little bit because I now have grandchildren that watch Daniel Tiger and there's a part of me that just like they just don't know that Mr. Rogers is the man who created Daniel Tiger and so they they miss out on this human um, but they still have the, their benefits of his um, creativity and his um, inspiration and again, it shows that that form of art lives forever, which is so, so amazing. But yeah, um, a way of, you know, Sesame Street and Mr. Rogers and the, um, if anybody remembers the show that was actually called Zoom, um, that was a kid's show and, um, or no, it was called The Electric Company. Electric and, Company. Um, they sang a song called Zoom, which I think is hilarious. One other question in terms of virtual teaching, is there ever, so prior to um, the pandemic, lots of times there had to be like releases to say that um, you could put a kid online and you know, whether it was picture, social media post, whatever, um, is there some sort of like privacy thing as it applies to like a Zoom meet with with school? I just wow, that, that, that was just a curiosity thing with me. That's a very interesting question. I haven't um, in, investigated that at all. I haven't thought of publishing or um, sharing any of the actual classroom meetings, but that would that's something to look into for sure. Um, I've always used flipped instruction in my classroom so that um, just for the sake of consistency. So I will always with my demonstrations have a video and that way also yes. it helps with classroom management clearly, right? That way the video's going and then you can walk around and um, answer any other questions. I'm always like, watch me, I'm up telling you the directions. Right. <laughs> so, right. Uh, and so of course- Just, if you just curious on that, um, great question from Dawn, which is, did um, did you guide the virtual tour or did a rep from the museum guide it? Oh, wonderful question. Yeah, um, with the Phoenix Art Museum that we did last week, 
um, it was just me um, guiding them through. I think with the Louvre, from what I saw, that there will be um, a virtual guide uh, at one of the uh, avenues that I, when I was trying to figure out how to do it, I saw that there was a virtual guide. So that would be really um, a fun way to do it that way. With me and doing it with the museum, since I have such young kids, um, I kind of tried to avoid some of the, um, <laughs> A lot of the nudity, <laughs> to be honest. The naked ones. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, directing it myself made uh, made it so that we could go to some of the pictures that um, some of the paintings that were in reference. We were studying clouds, and I'm talking about showing cirrus clouds, <laughs> cumulus clouds, nimbus clouds, um, and finding those paintings, and then letting the kids, oh, yeah, describe each cloud in there. So it's, again, that science connection. Um, and I did, then I did a whole lesson on painting their favorite clouds. So, uh, yes, that was um, fun. The, the naked thing is funny, though, because I got to um, participate at a local level one time as a chaperone, you know, just a great experience. I actually took the day off to do it. And, you know, I had four kids in my group, which was super easy, hands on, you know, just you know, everybody stayed really engaged. And of course we were in a section where it was just inevitable because there was a few paintings and then there was an actual sculpture. And, you know, so I was trying to be as mature as I can, which for those who know me, it's a struggle because I find it funny too. And so I just said, well, you know, a lot of people consider that art because it's human nature. You know, we were all born naked. And um, so some people, so some artists find it very beautiful and, and, and like to do the sculptures or the paintings that way. And the one little girl goes, well, I think it's gross. <laughs> and I'm like, you just keep thinking that for a long, long time, little girl. <laughs> um, but it was absolutely adorable. They were so much more over it as I was just trying to overcompensate for it. And so, yeah, it was, it was quite fun. Um, a little bit later, she also, she kept calling me teacher, and then she's like, can I come here, Mary? This was on the bus, and I was like, okay, I have, like, all, like, two inches of hair, go ahead, and as she took this little pic and was combing my hair, I just, all of a sudden, remembered, where did you get the comb? Like, we didn't have backpacks or anything like that, so I said, where, where did you get your comb? Found it in the bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, this is what teachers go through all the time, except they're probably smart enough to say, no, you can't comb my hair because we didn't have a backpack. You'd have been smarter, way smarter than I would. But it is always so delightful to spend even just a moment um, in a classroom or with, it, with um, students. So um we are rounding close to the end of the time so if you have another question now's the time to throw it out there we are um so look on um lakota's instagram it's at a matter of paint a matters of painters help me out lakota a matter of painters. So it's like a, a clouder of cats or a murder of crows. When you have a group of painters, it's a matter of painters. So I'll just painters. Here we go. Just, just like that. But it's a a matter of painters. Hopefully that didn't come across. Perfect. Yes. And you it's you're easy to find on Facebook, um, Lakota L A K O T A M O S S E Y. And um your Facebook page is delightful, your Instagram page is delightful, and I know that you and I are gonna work more together because you have so many fabulous ideas, and I'm so grateful. Thank you so much for spending time with us, Lakota. I appreciate more than you know, and um, keep working hard to keep that art out in front of your students as well. And um, wish you all the health and happiness as you continue to teach art. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Thank you everyone for being here and uh, see you soon. Absolutely. 
So everybody, just a reminder that next week and the following week in August, no more Maker Mondays, sad. But the good news is that in September, we will have the after school edition. We will try to continue to um, talk about the virtual learning. We are gonna put a little bit of an emphasis on the social emotional learning for September. And if you have ideas or suggestions, there is a survey at the end of the webinar that you can fill out. I am Chris Bakke, Customer Engagement Manager. My email is kbakke -E at nascoeducation.com. You're welcome to email me if you have, use me as a reference. I love to make connections. I love to share what I know, which isn't nearly as much as you know, but sometimes I can at least take what this teacher knows and this teacher knows and connect them. So thanks so much for um, joining us over the summer and thank you for all that you are doing to teach our students. We appreciate it and we want to serve you in any capacity. So reach out to us and stay well, stay happy and keep teaching art everybody.